I have with me here C plus was CEO of Capjoy and Steve was previously president of the Interactive Group, the other group from, from ground up and been in the content in gaming space for the last three years. Um, would like to get your perspective on the mobile advertising ecosystem, specifically talk about brand advertising. What's driving the brand advertisers into mobile and what's most important to them? Well, I think first and foremost, advertisers want to be, they want their message to be where consumers are spending their time and their attention. And clearly that's happening in mobile. You know, we've all seen the charts. Uh, time and attention spent in mobile devices is huge and it's growing. Uh, and the, the momentum that we're seeing, I think, is very similar to what we saw uh, with online and uh, online, the big delta between time spent online and uh, actual dollar spent is equalized online, it hasn't been mobile, um, and you're seeing that start to happen in early days, but uh, advertisers of all types are quickly moving to mobile and looking for the right solutions. I think the biggest gap between that time spent and dollars spent in advertising is going to be solved by the right solutions for advertisers. So you talk all kind of advertisers are looking to do that. Which which groups are most, or which groups or which categories are most aggressively um, spending money in, in brand and mobile, and are there any specific advertisers that are also most aggressive? Well, look, I think the people in this room know that um, app advertisers, particularly game app publishers, uh, who are looking for user acquisition are spending large amounts of money advertising, promoting their apps on mobile, and it's obvious you want to go where your audience is. Uh, that's the first place, and as we know, game engagement is sort of the number one media engagement on a mobile device. So, obviously, the largest audience is the game audience today, followed very closely by direct response and lead gen advertisers, largely because, and again, it mirrors what happened on the internet, lead gen advertisers, direct response advertisers are the most sophisticated about measuring ROI. And the second they know that they can get a productive, valued customer with the right ROI, the right lifetime value, uh, advertising in a platform that works, they're going to move their dollars there. They're going to do it very quickly because it's all based on the math. And the math works and that's happening in mobile and we see it hugely on our platform. And then next is, which is really starting to ramp up now, is brand advertisers who, again, just like the internet, tend to be uh, later to move because they're not measuring it in the same way. Um, it's the, the, the distance between their ad and the effect is much more attenuated. Um, plus, I think there's much more friction in that model uh, through agencies and, and the way uh, media is bought and sold. It's a slower process for brand advertisers to move, um, and that's happening. Now. It's starting to happen today. And within the brand guys, are there any specific verticals that are spending most? We see a lot of QSR, quick service restaurants. Obviously, actually, we also see a lot of brand advertisers who have a, um, a, a an end game, almost a direct response component. So a lot of credit card companies who ultimately are interested in you signing for their credit card, but are also brand advertisers. So you'll see those brands move early um, to support what they're doing in direct response or lead generation. Um, uh, you know, we've seen auto, we've seen, um, Really more broad, you know, obviously we've seen device manufacturers, mobile device manufacturers in particular, Samsung, Nokia, players like that are, are obviously where their customers are, they want to be on the platform. So those are sort of the early players who've been more aggressive and we're seeing, you know, more consumer packaged goods now and um, it's, it's pretty broad. And early, early on it starts with a lot of testing. Let's see what the impact is. Um, let's see if we can track what, what happens. The nice thing about, uh, oh, our model is a very engagement-focused model. The idea is we want to see a consumer fully engaged in an ad, um, and that offers the opportunity for engagement in that initial ad and a secondary action. And if that advertiser sees significant engagement in a secondary action, they'll view that as a pretty good result because uh, it means that consumer wants to be in their message. So, um, so early days, we're seeing a lot of players across the board, but, but it's really like the guys who see their audience on those platforms. And um, just getting a feeling the size of the spend from the brand guys versus the overall uh, mobile advertising market and diet response, just a feeling 
how large is grain and what's what's your outlook? I mean, I assume we're in a steeper part of the curve. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I think what's happening is, again, mirroring what happened on the internet, but I think at a more accelerated rate, and will probably last longer, that curve will be going up into the right longer, um, you're seeing direct response and lead generation, the majority of what's happening. Set aside the game component, or, or app, really it's games, but app advertising, the direct response and lead gen is today the majority, the vast majority. Um, but we're seeing, you know, in components of what we do, you know, video is, is, a, is a pretty big emerging uh, solution. A lot of ad, a lot of brand advertisers moving to that. Um, and so we've seen that business quadruple for us, you know, this year. Um, but I think it's going to be probably four or five years, th three to four years before you see it equalizing between brand advertisers and the other advertisers on the world platform. Okay. For a mobile publisher or game developer, just from a monetization point of view, how does the brand um, spending or the monetization of a brand ad compare with to uh, direct response or others? Um, it, it's, I'd say it's different, right? I mean, there, there are direct response advertisers who will pay a significant amount for the right consumer, the right need, the right engagement in their product. Um, they, will, they will value that media based on the end result of the value of that consumer. A brand advertiser will value the brand message as well. The fact that a message, and in fact, you're seeing with the game, game advertisers today, guys who are in this audience who are spending money to acquire users through solutions like ours are paying based on getting end users. Whereas a brand advertiser, and, and they may use video, maybe you know, video or rich media followed by an install of an app, and they're going to look at it and say, did I get value from the quality of that consumer downloading my app? Um, they won't necessarily look at, oh, gee, there's also a brand value to the engagement in the video of the rich media. They're going to look at the end result. Brand advertisers will value and do value that brand engagement as well. As, and in fact, largely that's what they're, they're valuing. So, it's a different balance of where the equation is on the value um, of the engagement in mobile. Um, generally speaking, though, between the because mobile can offer both that brand engagement as well as some follow-on action, I think brand advertisers see a higher value generally um, out of any given you know engagement in mobile. So I think what we see is more and more in our network of advertisers. Brand advertisers are rising to the top quickly in terms of what they're prepared to pay. So it's increasing the value that uh, a publisher can draw out of that, you know, that ad engagement. Okay, so it seems getting the right user is is critical for the brand, and that leads to how to acquire the right users, um, customer acquisition. I think this year was very interesting. There was a lot of dynamics happening from the beginning of the year, where the CPIs were, where they're now. Facebook came in. Can you give your perspective what happened in the customer acquisition, user acquisition space, and what do you think what's happening next year? Yeah, I'd say there are a couple of things happening. I think embedded in the answer to the question is the whole idea of targeting, right? Which Facebook, I think, has done a phenomenal job of leveraging the data they have to do very robust targeting to put the right game primarily in front of a consumer on a Facebook on the Facebook app and that's been that targeted and very successful in driving um, user acquisition. I think early on that platform and I don't know have the data this is second hand, but you know it was fairly it was it was very cost effective and as more people pile in the costs go up because the uh, demand is increasing. Um, but I think it, what it's done overall is it's it's created a broader understanding that targeting is a critical to success. So across the board, our solution and others, targeting is becoming increasingly important to driving the right user, getting increased value for the publisher for user acquisition. Um, uh, on the other hand, um, you know, overall I'd say the CPI spend has probably come down generally, but I think it's starting to flatten out, maybe come back up as more and more now, you know, uh, uh, people jump back in. I think Game uh, publishers, in particular, got substantially more sophisticated about how they're spending and then tracking ROI and LTV all the way through the lifetime of a user. And um, and with that sophistication comes one more increase in targeting, the, the 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 comfort level with paying a higher <coughs> rate for a well-targeted user, 
uh, but also be more selective. On the other hand, there are also plenty of um, game publishers who see the value of driving a, a, a higher volume of downloads that ultimately result in more movement and more exposure in the charts than otherwise. So that, that still happens, but more and more it's shifting toward more sophistication, more targeting, and ultimately better you know, quality out. So just looking at some metrics, if you, in general, within gaming, CPIs, beginning of the year, where we are now, what would you say? Um, I'd say that for uh, the aggregate, the CPIs have probably come down. I'd say they have come down. I'd say in targeted solutions, and the more targeted it is, they come up. Okay. If, um, just hypothetically, if a game developer would like to get in the top 10 or top 20 on, let's say, iOS, just a feeling, how much would a publisher developer need to pay to actually make that, that high up? I, honestly, I don't have a great answer to that question. I mean, I, I think, it, I, I think you got to start with a great game, first of all. I mean, right. You've got to have a great game, because if, it doesn't matter how much money you spend, if people are coming back to that game, you're not going to really break through the way you want to break through. So I don't think there's an easy, simple, you know, here's the dollar that gets you into the top charts. I mean, you know, I, I, I think, you, and you have to spend across a whole range of solutions to really drive yourself to that position. So um, I don't think it's a simple answer. I think the cost is incre that, that, the cost is increased over time, though, to get that kind of exposure, because the competition for that, you know, there's a lot of noise. And to break through that noise is getting more expensive. Ultimately, it starts with having a great product that consumers can engage in and come back to. There's still a lot of value to things like word of mouth and friends telling each other versus just being in the, in the top of the charts. So ultimately, the focus is on um, uh, finding the right solutions and for what your ultimate needs are. And if it's that, it's going to be a pretty broad set of solutions. Us and a number of other partners are going to help you. Okay. Um. Um, looking at the incentivized advertising space, uh, I mean, there's been a lot of shift from, you know, a lot of paid apps to free-to-play. What's your outlook for incentivized ads moving forward? Uh, I think it's a huge opportunity for, uh, obviously, I think it's a huge opportunity for um, the game ecosystem and the whole app ecosystem. For a number of reasons. I mean, if you think about advertising generally, true engaged advertising is in some way incentivized. I mean, early, in, if you're watching free television, you're not there to watch the ad or the commercials. You're there to engage in the content, and your incentive, your, your incentive is the content, but you're watching the commercial because you've got to watch it to get through to the content. That's how I think the model ultimately is going to work. More and more, when you get into other traditional forms of advertising like print, it's a it sits around the content, and yes, you may have some knowledge or awareness of it, but you're not truly engaging. In a device like the mobile platforms on smartphones and tablets, limited real estate, what really you want, whether you're a publisher, a game publisher, an app publisher, or an advertiser, is engagement. And I think providing clarity around um, the, the, that engagement through the right rewards makes a ton of sense. The, the, our, you know, our model, a lot of these models are, hey, engage in this ad and get further in this app, get the next level, get currency, whatever it is. One, that clarifies the fact that there's value in that content. You can buy it, and here's what the cost is, or you can get, engage in an ad versus, oh, it's free. Well, I think content ultimately is, is, is paid for, it's expensive to produce, it's expensive to market. I think it, it's, it's clear, if you're clear with the consumer, that there's inherent value uh, content and that value is created through advertising if you're paying for it. And I think creating that clarity, I think over time, is going to help the ecosystem both on the in app purchase premium side of the business as well as on the advertising side of the business. Um, so I think that incentivized or that clear, well, I would say that clear value exchange proposition where there is a value to this content and the consumer acknowledges it through either paying for it or engaging in advertising is simply going to help drive the business. And with limited real estate, the idea of, oh, well, we're just going to kind of try to figure out how we slot ads in here. If you're, if you're a publisher of a game, it's just a distraction that's going to, over time, alienate your user. 
I think, versus saying, hey, you have a choice, you can opt in. Opt in and engage. So I think it's a huge opportunity for game publishers and app publishers of all kinds, given that real estate, the traditional display model of, oh, let's see if we can get some awareness for our message by putting things around what's going on is just not proven to be effective. And I don't think it will be that effective over time versus being really clear about that value exchange. Makes sense. Looking at uh, new emerging platforms, looking at Asia, Line, Kakao, chat platforms becoming very successful and dominant, um, there's some discussion about Snapchat, maybe WhatsApp, some others emerging there. Do you see any of this happening in the US near to medium term, or do you see any other players kind of offering another app store kind of ecosystem? Yeah, it's funny. We just had, had a conversation over lunch with a couple of guys at the table. I, and I, I think the answer is in the U.S. it's going to be much harder because I think the, the stores are, in, in some of those Asian markets, those app stores are a pretty confusing environment. In China in particular, there's all these different app stores. It's, the Google one is, I think, blocked. It's very hard to create an understanding on, from a consumer perspective around the ecosystem given the confused nature of the app store environment in many of those markets. In the U.S., I think it's a lot clearer, and I think people get that you know it's, it's Google Play, it's iOS App Store, and that's the sort of ecosystem that's built up here. That said, I think there is a potential opportunity for uh, new entrants, players who have a significant position. Um, maybe, I think mean, maybe on the app side or WhatsApp or something like that, it's possible. I think it's tough. Um, maybe a platform provider in the form of somebody like Samsung with significant market share. Uh, in the device could potentially create a compelling store environment or app discovery environment. But again, I think it's going to be harder, which is I think why it hasn't happened yet. But there are, it, it, it could evolve. Okay, great. Open it up for questions. Um, anybody have a question? We have 52 seconds of awkward silence. <laughs> well then, go, go ahead. Can you opine on the recent rumor of Tencent investing in Snapchat? Um, it's probably smart. Uh, I, I don't have a great insight into it at all. I mean, I, you know, it's just rumors like everybody else hears. Um, but obviously, you've got a huge player that's dominant in China trying to figure out smart ways to get exposure in a market that's as important and as valuable as the West. Um, you know, to the extent that they have an opportunity to invest in a huge footprint that exists here, I mean, it's probably a smart thing, but I have no insight beyond, you know, an opinion. Incentivized versus non-incentivized installs. So clearly there is a massive delta between the price someone pays for an incentivized install versus a non-incentivized install. And kind of, a, I think the overall feeling is, hey, people want non-incentivized install. Given what you've been seeing with LTVs and with take rates, uh, do you actually think that uh, app developers are making higher returns on incentivized or non-incentivized installs given the price differential? Uh, that's a good question. I think ultimately, and ultimately, I think this whole thing is evolving very quickly. And I think ultimately, the combination of great targeting and the right value exchange, incentive, or reward is going to result in a much better solution uh, in terms of value for the app publisher. Uh, today, I don't, I don't know what the specific math is, I would, I would, but I feel confident that over time, and given that combination, um, having a rewarded, clear value exchange um, uh, that's driving an engagement in the right thing is going to drive a higher quality user. Um, so I, I would say over time, I believe a rewarded value exchange model is going to be a model that is pretty dominant for people looking for the right, um, for the right users. Okay, great. Thanks, Steve. Thank you, Michael. Appreciate it. Thanks, everybody.